That's what I took. And uh, and then I got these. And I thought, well, hey, I can read that smaller print. But uh, apparently I, my eyes have changed again. So anyway, I can read this one better. Uh, Amy certainly don't like to tote it around if I if she has to, to tote it anywhere. So I don't know if it's to be a one and done thing or not. But Psalm 90 in verse number 12, this is a verse of scripture that uh, I have uh, reflected upon, dwelt upon, prayed about uh, over the years a great deal. The uh, different translations of uh, the Bible uh, say pretty much the same thing. And uh, but we'll we'll look at some different translations as well. But like I said, they they pretty much the same. So Psalm nine and verse twelve. And a lot of times when I think you may not be that way. When I think of the Psalms, I think about David. This particular Psalm here is written by a fellow by the name of Moses, and uh, he he wrote uh, a few. Uh, so Psalm ninety, Psalm number ninety, verse number twelve. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And pretty much the same thing that the uh, English Standard Version says, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of, re- of wisdom. And the New American Standard Version, of course the 1995 update, got to throw that in there unless somebody's going to say, well, that's not the update, but it is the update. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you, that's to God, a heart of wisdom. So let's uh, think about this for just a minute. We just passed the halfway point for as far as months go, the halfway point of this year. So uh, if you, if I, if we, at the beginning of the year was wanting to do something, and uh, you like me, oh, we, we can do that later. Well, it's halfway through, so we need to uh, either put it on further on the back burner or maybe think about doing it. Uh, one writer says this, The slow, sad experience of life brought out in the psalmist a twofold result. He is, now, he, Ronnie, you're going to like this. He has learnt, that's with a T at the end. That sounds like us, don't it, Ronnie? He has learnt. The secret of both detachment and attachment. The pilgrim grows more and more weaned from the world and detached from things trivial and temporal. Such would be the effect of the right numbering of our days. So uh, we don't know how many days we got. Now, uh, talk to different ones in the church, and I, I kind of... Uh, can see this. I, I believe there's been folks in my life that knew the time was growing near because of some of the things they got to telling me, some of the things that people in the church told me that their family members had told them. I believe that they believed the time was growing close. But we don't know how many days we got left. Uh, turn over to James chapter 4. Starting in verse number 13. We mentioned, uh, I think Sunday night, about uh, some guy calling in the radio station. He said, I've got the way that y'all need to use when somebody asks questions about the Trinity. This is how y'all need to explain it. And so he, I mean, just poured his heart out there. They, they just kept shut, kept their mouth shut and listened to him. And he said, the Trinity, it's like water. You got your liquid, you got your gas, and you got your solid, and uh, that's the Trinity. And so they let him hang up and said, well, that's all fine and good. That's getting close, but there is no water that can be ice, vapor, and liquid all at the same time. God's all three of them at the same time, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, uh... James writes a little bit about vapor here in James chapter 4, starting in verse number 13. It says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we're going to go into such a city and continue there a year 
buy and sell and, and get game. Hey, this is what we're going to do. Why are we going to do it? Because it's on our calendar. I used to have a thing laying on my desk called a day timer. Now, what did I do with a day timer? I kept it open. It was a month spread out there in front of me. And I wrote down every phone call I ever got. Wrote down what it was about, who it was from. Sometimes I wrote down a phone number if I was one calling. And I kept a record in case somebody came back and said, well, on such and such date I talked to you, and I could look and say, yeah, no, you didn't. Or, oh, yeah, I, I remember that. I got it wrote down right here. So, but these, he's talking about these that are saying, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move over yonder, and we're going to start our business up, and we're going to do well over yonder, and it's going to be the day tomorrow one. But look at verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now, I heard, uh, I think it was Miss Karen talking about a few weeks ago about the, the canning process. And I remember watching uh, Mama do it. I remember watching my grandmother do it. Yours truly. I ain't going to say I ain't going to do it, but so far I hadn't done it. But watching that viper come out of that little thing that spins around, it always fascinated me. I wanted to go up there and just, and they said, no, you don't, you don't need to do that. Just watch it. And the viper would spit up, and I always wondered, where'd that viper go? And uh, it's kind of like some of my stuff that I lay around for, and Miss Amy comes through. I said, Miss Amy, where's, where's this stuff at? Away. I put it away. And Miss Jackie, sometimes I thought away was the garbage can, but she assures me she don't throw it away, she just puts it away. And uh, that away, uh, a lot of times I ain't never found where away was. But that's our life. It's just a viper that's here for just a little time, and then where does it go? It goes away, wherever away is. It vanishes away. And then verse 15, he says, this is what we ought to say. And I, you've, heard, you've heard it. You may have said it. I may have said it. You may have heard me say it. Lord willing, this is what we're going to do. That's what verse 15 says. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in all your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. And then there's a definition of sin there in verse 17 that, uh, you know, down through the years, especially after the Sharpie marker was invented, somebody might have got that Sharpie marker and just wore out verse 17. And uh, people that uh, looked in that person's Bible from, for years later, might have thought, well, verse 16, why is there a black gap there between verse 16 and chapter 5? It's because they marked it out. Because it says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do sin, uh, knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, it's sin. Well, I kind of got that goofed up, didn't I? Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I heard, uh, speaking of me goofing that up, I heard on the video the other night that uh, one of the gospel singers had got up, and I mean, just testifying up a storm, and got to say, and called a certain age. I'm going to say, I don't know what age it was. Let's say he was 12 years old. And uh, this is what he said on stage. I was so glad that the Lord asked me to be his Lord and Savior at age 12. And I reckon they let it go and uh, didn't say nothing because they kind of jokesters, the ones who did it, the ones standing up there with him and didn't let it go. And, and one of the guys was testing, saying later, and said, I, I was wondering why, was I the only one that heard that? And then uh, they laid down that night they had bunk beds in the bus. They laid down, and one of them punched the other one up above him and said, Hey, I'm so thankful that the Lord asked me to be his Lord and Savior so many years ago. So anyway, I messed that up a little bit. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it's sin. Years half over, 
What about our life? Our viper might be very well present right now, but in a few days, will it still be present? If you'll turn over, mine's just a page over. Of course, I got these big pages. Yours might be a few pages. Uh, First Peter chapter one, verses twenty-four and twenty-five. Now it's going to compare us to grass. Now I'm looking out there and I see some green grass. I see some brown grass, and then I see some more green grass out here through the church doors. Uh, my yard is mainly brown right now. There is a few patches of green, but uh, a few. Weeks ago, it was all green. But you say, well, why does all that happen, Scripture? He's just telling us right here. First Peter 1, verse 24 and 25. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, the flower thereof falleth away. That's life. But he ain't done. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now, while we're over here in the New Testament, I want you to turn mine's back to several pages. Colossians chapter number 4, verse number 5. So as I've telling you Sunday, mind you Sunday, General Electric Power Company, so it'd be that fourth book after 2 Corinthians. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 5. If you remember when we read the whole thing of Psalm 90 and verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Verse 5 of Colossians chapter 4 says this, Walk in wisdom. Now, uh, y'all have heard me tell this before, but Daddy's got a planter. Now, Granddaddy had a planter, but you had to hook it up to something. We sometimes used a mule, a horse, whatever he had, pony, whatever it was he had to pull that planter. But uh, he got rid of all that. Daddy's got one you just walk behind and push, and he's got different plates that goes in there. got one for the corn, got one for the this, that, and the peas, and beans. Different, different plates that goes in there to let the seed fall through the, the chute and it, uh, it plant. Uh, makes a little fur before it and drops the seed and the wheel comes back and covers it up. Uh, I got that and took it over to my granddaddy's one time and uh, I planted his garden for him. He got it ready with his tractor and I came behind him with the planter, just walking, dropping seeds. And I went back up there with him a few weeks later to see what was coming up. See if the seed was good, see if we had to replant anything. And I could still see my footprints except for this. There were other footprints inside my footprints. And he said, uh, Marty, I just want you to look at that. Uh, by the way, my nephew's seven years younger than me. He's more like a brother than a nephew. And uh, so anyway, I was a teenager. He was below a teenager. But he went he went up there to Granddad to see if anything had come up, and he tried to step where I stepped. His legs weren't long enough. His legs now be long enough, but then they wouldn't. And he was Granddad said he was struggling. But he was trying to walk into your footprints. And he said, Marty, that ought to teach you something. Said, yes, sir. But not just them footprints in the dirt. There's some footprints through life. You might think we ain't, you ain't leaving none, but hey, we are. Because that word translated walk there is to, means to tread all around. And my, in my mind, I'm thinking about that garden and me walking through that fr freshly plowed dirt and there my footprints were left. But it don't have to be freshly plowed dirt. 
for us to leave a footprint in somebody's life. So walk in wisdom, where at? Toward them that are without. There are folks that we come in contact with every day that uh, don't know Jesus. I was sitting in the training union class. You know, later on it became discipleship training, discipleship, uh, and then later on it just went away. But at the time it was training union. We were sitting in class, and this guy looked at these two girls, and, or this man looked at these two women and said, did y'all know I was lost when we was in high school together? Why didn't y'all tell me about Jesus? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Uh, I would remember that church presenting me with a cassette tape one day. Said, Marty, I want you to listen to this. This is my testimony. If I called his name, I think most everybody except two would would know. Well, three, four, five. I keep on seeing all these young you know. Most of us would know who I'm talking about. Here's his testimony. He went to church for years. Sat in the pew for years. And nobody bothered to say. Do you know Jesus? And finally, one day, he was saved. And so, we may rub elbows, people may think, well, hey, they're in. Well, uh, maybe they ain't. Maybe we need to ask. So, walk in wisdom. Toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Uh, the word translated redeeming means to buy up. To buy up the time. I've told you all the story about Amy, or our China cabinet. What's in it is a 12-piece uh, setting of China and it's all because Amy redeemed the coupon. We didn't have no uh, pattern picked out when we got married. We didn't do that. And so sometime after we got married, wasn't long after we got married, we get this letter in the mail, and Amy has to have it notarized, sends it back in, and whoo, she's won a 12-place setting of Royal Dalton, China. She gets to pick out the pattern and all that stuff. And uh, I think the last time I told that, she was here, and... Maybe one time we've ate off of it, but hey, it's, it's good to look at. Redeeming the time. Buying up the time instead of just letting time go away. Moses wrote that. He said, uh, teach us to number our days that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom. Turn over with me. Um, it's a couple of books back. Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, it says a lot of the same stuff there, similar, but uh, just a little bit different. So let's look at Ephesians 5, verses uh, 15 and 16, because it has that same phrase, redeeming the time, in there in verse 16. Ephesians 5 and verse 15 says, uh, See then that ye walk circumspectly. Greek word translated circumspectly <clears throat> is a word akrobos. It means exactly. Now, uh, it, amaz it amazes me looking at fields that are planted. If you come... If you go about the road a certain way, you up on the hill and coming down, you can see how straight everything is. It used to not be that way. 
used to, there'd be a terrace out there, and you planted according to the terraces. And you might have rows going this way and some going that way. But now, as my daddy says, you can shoot a bullet down through there. And that's because most of them have a GPS, and it marks where they are at, and then that they just sit back, and the tractor turns and gets the next, and it's straight as it can be, exactly. Some folks teach and preach that uh, you can do what you want to, the Lord's going to bless you. Well, that word right there, uh, they apparently have not looked that word up, or they took a sharpie to it, circumspectly. Because it means that Marty has an exact spot that he needs to be walking in. So see then that you walk uh, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And then there's that phrase again, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Now, we could go around the room tonight, but uh, we won't. Because I think everybody's going to agree with this. Meanness has been around for a long time. We know more about it today. It's more accepted today than it ever has been. Romans chapter 1 is coming to fruition just every day. Because, you know, they not only enjoy doing wrong themselves, but hey, rejoice in those that do wrong right along with them. Moses wrote this. So teach us to number our days. And I think one translation throws in number our days aright. We throw that one in there. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Several years ago, I going to UNA, I would got my master's degree, and uh, I was right there in the in between. Because before I got my master's degree, you could get, if you wanted to be a principal one day, you could get your principal certificate. Keep working as a teacher, get paid as master's degree, and then I came along. There's old Mosley. Let's change that up. You got to be doing what you got your master's degree in, or you don't get your master's pay. Okay. Well, I got. I was teaching math, so I got my master's degree in math. Somewhere during that program, they changed it back. Now you can get a master's degree in coin collecting. And we'll pay you for your master's degree. You can get a master's of theology. And we'll pay you for your master's degree. So after I got my master's degree in math, I went immediately into getting my certification as an administrator. And part of that uh, internship was I had to go to a high school, which Cloverdale meant everything except the central office, because uh, Cloverdale went K through 9, so I could get elementary, middle school, and high school there because we had ninth grade. But I went to Cloverdale, I went to Brooks Elementary, did a little bit of Underwood Elementary, and I went to Lexington High School and did some internship for the schools. And then I went to the county office and worked with uh, Mr. Valentine, who later on became superintendent. I said, what do you need me to do? He said, well, the history people are coming in this week, and I'm going to make them, and he made them, uh, we're going to do a pacing guide for the history teachers in our county. And you say, well, what's a pacing guide? Well, it's kind of not like a calendar, but it, it shows after day so-and-so, this is where you need to be, where everybody in the county would be pretty much on the same page. And in my case, when we did the math one, there's some things that need to be covered for that state test is, is here. So if I'm following that pacing guide, most of the time I was ahead in that pacing guide, and 
it kept me where I needed to be. Then I got to Tennessee. Y'all got a pacing guy? Because I went from administrator back to teacher. Y'all got a pacing guy? Of what? Oh, no, we don't, we don't have one of that. And then I went up to high school. I said, uh, they said, what do you need? I said, I would like to know the pacing. And so some of my coworkers said, this is what we do. Said, hey, what about in life? Because we as teachers have, there's a test coming. And if one plus one's on that test, we need to cover one plus one before we get to that test. Or else some kids may not know what one plus one is. And I'm making a simple example because I hope all mine knows what one plus one is. But what about in life? Here's my problem. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I've got a pacing guide that I've been putting stuff off on. Oh, yeah, I need to do that, but it can wait. What Psalm 9 and verse 12 tells me is there's some things that need to be done. I can, I'm not going to call any names, I can call you some names of some folks that just came to my mind and it was like the Lord, or the Lord was. Marty, you need to go see them. Yeah, I do. Next thing I know, there's burying them. So teach us to number our days. And we'll throw that word in there because some translations do. Right. so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, one guy that uh, at this church, he said, y'all, I want to give y'all my definition of a wise man. I said, okay. It's an old man with long white hair and a long beard. James, you, you approach him that, man. Just let your hair grow out a little bit. Okay? Yeah, sorry, man. According to that definition, you're, you're about halfway wise, but uh, <clears throat> I don't agree with that. He said, what's your definition of wise? Somebody that knows God's word and applies it. Because we know God's word. Yeah, hey, I know what, that's, that's, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. But the wise man's going to be doing it. So teach us to number our days, and we'll throw that word in there, right, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. J. Vernon McGee, he's got uh, three and a third lines. So we'll see what J. Vernon McGee has to say. It is God, it is Christ who has made unto us wisdom. But of, and in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. And then J. Vermegee says, If you have Christ, you have wisdom, you have hope. And one group of writers says this, because the future of the unbelieving Israelites was already set, Moses in this prayer was surely more for our benefit than for theirs. And may God help us to understand how few our days are. Daddy's sitting here 91 years old. And I, I tried to explain this to some children a few years ago. Several years ago. I said, y'all, I stand before you today half of my daddy's age and I'll never be half of his age again.
because I was 34 years old and he was 68. And Ronnie, believe it or not, I'm gaining on him. I'm, I'm, that, that half it was is, is slimming down. He's still 34 years older than me, though. But he's less than half older than me, if, that, if you can follow my thinking there. So because the future of the unbelieving Israelites was already set, Moses' prayer was surely made for our benef- more for our benefit than ours. May God help us to understand how few our days are on earth actually are that we may live wisely according to his will and according to his word. You may have got anything else before we we're going to turn one more place and that's uh, Proverbs chapter 2. When I was uh, looking Up uh, that uh, New American Standard Version, the 1995 update, it had a little footnote there. So I clicked over there, and Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 6 came up. So let's read that, and then we'll close. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, now Job 28 and 29, I believe it is, says, that men have spent a lifetime mining for silver and gold. And we can throw in there in the United States oil, and except for Jed Clampett, he, he found it and didn't mean to. Uh, spend a lifetime. But then Job, then in Job it asked this question, what about wisdom? Do we seek after wisdom? And of course, in that case, what we've been talking about tonight is seeking after Christ. So, verse 4 of uh, Proverbs 2, If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest her for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord... This last verse we're going to read. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So teach us to number our days, and we'll throw in there a right, because I think some versions do, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom, applying our hearts to Jesus Christ. Any words tonight before we we close? Thank thank you all for being here. And uh, we'll have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Most kind and gracious, Heavenly Father, thank you for you allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. And uh, thank you for your word. Thank you that uh, you've given us, as your children, your Holy Spirit, who teaches us things. And Lord, may each one of us realize me on top of that list. Our days are but a few. Help us do the things of wisdom that will point others to you. Go with us now as we go our separate ways and uh, be with these we mentioned for prayer tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.